Hello there, Full Size here with another Rust Electronics video. Today, I'm going to be showing you a better way to build the typical infinite power circuit. You may recognize the circuit in front of you, as it is found in many YouTube videos demonstrating an infinite power circuit, and also I've asked many different players who do Rust Electronics how they do the infinite power circuit, and so far they've all shown me the exact same build. However, there are some significant problems with this circuit, which I will demonstrate at the end of the video. But first, I want to show you a better way to build this. So, for this build, you're going to need the following components. A large solar panel, one small rechargeable battery, two electrical branches, one blocker, one OR switch, a wire tool, and if you want to follow along with an additional exercise, one large rechargeable battery, and one counter. First, let's set up our power by putting down the solar panel. If you hold your wire tool in your hand and hover over the electrical output, you see that this solar panel is outputting 20 volts. It may interest you to know that solar panels put out different amount of voltage depending not only on how much sunlight is hitting them, but also the state of their repair. So if this solar panel were half damaged, it would only be putting out half power even in direct sunlight. The next thing we need is our small battery, followed by the two electrical branches, and then the blocker. Finally, put down the OR switch above that. Now, these components can be arranged any which way you want, so long as the wires are all connected from the same terminals to the same terminals that I'm going to demonstrate. However, for demonstration purposes, I'm trying to keep the wire connections as clean as possible so that it's very clear where each wire goes. Now using the wire tool, connect the electrical output from the solar panel to the power in of the first electrical branch. Electrical branches work very much like splitters, except that they only have two outputs. Also, the left output, the branch output, is a set value. By default, this value is set to 2 volts. We will need to adjust this on the first electrical branch, but let's go ahead and build the circuit first, and we'll come back to that later. So, connect the electrical branch output to the input A of the OR switch, then the power out from the first electrical branch to the power in of the second electrical branch. Then, the branch output from the second electrical branch will go into the block pass-through of the blocker. The power out from the second electrical branch will go into the power in for the battery. Power out from the battery connected to the power in from the blocker. Power out from the blocker to input B of the OR switch. Now, this is the entire circuit. However, I'm going to add a counter to it just for demonstration purposes. Connect the power out from the OR switch to the power in of the counter. Then, hold E while looking at the counter be careful not to do it on any of the terminals or you'll just connect a wire. And then select Show Pass-Through. What this does is it shows us the amount of power that's coming out of the OR switch. In this case, we have one single volt, which isn't good for anything. So to finish setting up this circuit, hold E to configure the first electrical branch. And then you can set the amount to branch off, and we want to set that to 9 volts. The reason we want to set that to 9 volts is that when we're running off of battery power, we only get 8 volts available to the circuit. Because we have a 10 volt output from the battery, we lose 1 volt going through the blocker, 1 more volt going through the OR switch, leaving 8 volts available. By setting this branch power to 9 volts, we lose 1 volt going through the OR switch, and again, we have 8 volts available to the circuit. So whether it's running on main power or battery power, we maintain 8 volts constant to our circuit. Alternatively, you could set the circuit up with a large battery, and all you would have to do is change these two wires connecting the small battery to the large battery counterparts. So the power out from the second electrical branch would go to the power in for the battery, and then the power out for the battery would go into the power in for the blocker. So now, it's set up to run with this large battery. One additional change you would need to make, because the large battery puts out 100 volts, leaving the same 2 volt drop and 98 volts available to the circuit, 
is you need to change the branch power on the first electrical branch to 99 volts. Again, you lose 1 volt going through the OR switch, leaving 98 volts available to the circuit. Right now, indicated by these two green lights, we are running off of battery power because there are not 98 volts available from this one solar panel. Obviously, if you want to run your circuit using a large battery, you would need to have considerably more power generation available. Either several solar panels combined with root combiners or possibly a wind generator or two depending on your elevation so that your average power input was above 98 volts. So that's the entire circuit if that's all you needed to see. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. If you're sticking around though, now I'm going to explain in a little more detail why this circuit is so superior to the one typically used. Back to our typical circuit, which again is found in multiple YouTube videos as well as many player bases that I've personally seen. This seems to be a pretty good circuit because it does automatically switch power back and forth between the battery based on the input power. But there are several significant disadvantages to it. First of all, because the splitter evenly splits power between the OR switch and this electrical branch, you come up with a problem where you can have insufficient power to run your circuit and yet it's still not switching over to battery power. To demonstrate, I've made a mock circuit with these four lights. It requires two volts for each of these lights to operate. We have eight available and therefore this is as many lights as we can run off this particular setup. Obviously for running off the large battery we could run significantly more but we're just going to use a small one for now. This electrical branch I added in order to manipulate the power available to the splitter to represent various power inputs. Right now, this solar panel is in direct sunlight and it's outputting 20 volts. However, what happens in the early morning or evening when you're getting a little bit of sunlight, but not quite enough? What if we only had 5 volts incoming? Well, if we have 5 volts incoming, we're still not running off of the battery power because there's enough voltage split off to this blocker to prevent it. However, we only have one single volt available to the rest of our circuit none of our lights are on. Our entire circuit is dead. It doesn't have small enough amount of power to go to battery, but it doesn't have enough power to run even one light bulb. Okay, what if we had 10 volts coming in? That's half of what a solar panel can do and would be expected for at least several minutes while the sun is coming up and going down. Or it could also happen if the sun is going behind a mountain or trees from the perspective of your base. So even with half the power available from the solar panel, we still only have one single light on because we only have three volts available to the circuit. Again, we would need at least four to run two lights. How much power is needed for the circuit to operate properly? Shockingly, we need 19 volts, almost 100% output from a single solar panel in order to get an eight volt output from the circuit. If we were to drop even to 18 volts, we only have a 7 volt output, one of our lights isn't on, representing 25% of our electrical circuit. This could obviously be a very big problem. Now, if you're just running lights in your base, it's not that big of a deal. One corner of your base went dark. But what if you're running sensors, traps, door controllers, things like that? That could represent the difference between saving your base and losing it when sensors aren't operating properly. So for this circuit to work, again, we need a minimum of 19 volts. For it to switch to battery power, it would have to drop all the way down to 4 volts. So between a 5 volt input and 19 volt input, this circuit is simply not working as it should. You're not getting a steady 8 volt output like you would from the battery, and yet it's not switching to the battery. Now. With the circuit design that I showed you the build of at the beginning of the video, we have a completely different situation because we can set this branch power. Now right now, this branch power is set to 9, just like in the build. Indicated by this red light, we are not operating off of battery power. Over here, I've represented a 12 volt input. So at only 12 volts, this circuit is capable of outputting 8 volts to your main circuit. If we were to drop this to 11 volts, 
then again our batter our then again our voltage to our circuit stays at 8 volts because it switches over to battery power so with this circuit only requiring 12 volts we are able to run it on 40% less power than the typical circuit used also we maintain 8 volts output regardless of the power input it could be anywhere from 1 volt to 30 volts it doesn't matter we're going to have our 8 volt output again this could be 98 volts if we were using the large battery setup but for demonstration purposes we're sticking to the small battery the other huge advantage of this is that it only requires an electrical branch here instead of the splitter now that might not seem like a very big deal when you're playing around with this in creative but when you're on a vanilla server or any server that requires blueprints and you actually have to mine your high quality metal that makes a significant difference you have to have an electrical branch before you can build this circuit anyway because there has to be one here so by using an electrical branch here you don't have to have a blueprint for the splitter also the splitter cost 10 high quality metal while the electrical branch only cost 3 so this circuit requires 40 percent less power it requires one less component blueprint it requires seven less high quality metal to construct and it gives a steady power output regardless of power input i hope you've enjoyed this video if you've learned anything from it please like subscribe and check back for future videos i will be doing more rust electronics videos but i wanted to start with this one because this circuit is usually going to be fundamental to any power setup you want to be able to have power at nighttime if you're on a server that doesn't have nighttime you want to be able to maintain power if somebody decides to grief you by knocking out your power generators and this circuit is the way to do it again i hope you enjoyed and i look forward to seeing you next time